What's going on guys? Sharpshot here. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. So for today's video, I'm going to do a really quick breakdown of DBD's June 2022 mid-chapter developer update. This is probably the biggest update we've seen in years for DBD with major killer and survivor reworks, a prestige system rework, and a ton of huge perk reworks. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So the newly introduced prestige system actually reduces the blood point grind by 75% and unlocking perks is no longer tied to a character's level. Now when you prestige a character to prestige one, that character's teachables at level one will be readily available on all of the other characters. And if you prestige that character to prestige two, then all the tier two perks will be available for everybody else. And then prestige three, tier three. So this is really nice because now all you need to do is prestige three every single character to have every single perk at tier three unlocked on everybody. So it saves a ton of blood points in the grind. Another addition to the prestige system is that when you actually do prestige, you won't lose all of your items, perks, add-ons, and stuff like that. And they've made prestiging not optional, so you have to keep prestiging. You can't just stay at the level 50 blood web like you used to be able to. They've also uncapped the amount of prestiges you can get on a character. Prestige 1, 2, and 3 gives the perks levels 1, 2, and 3 on all of the characters. Prestige 4, 5, and 6 will unlock that character's bloody cosmetics. Prestige 7, 8, and 9 will unlock a charm of one of those characters teachable perks and with uncapped prestige you're actually going to be able to show off how many times you prestige a character in the end game lobby as you can see in this image right here on the left. The Shrine of Secrets is also changing according to the prestige system and they made it even better now so that if you purchase a perk in the Shrine of Secrets it's going to be automatically available for all of the characters and what's even cooler now is that you can rebuy the same perk in the shrine of secrets to get it to a whole new tier on every character which honestly makes the shrine of secrets a lot more useful than it used to be and going from the old system to the new system you won't lose any items or anything on any of your characters and any perks that you have right now any bloody cosmetics for the prestige that you have right now you'll get to keep them and how they're going to gauge how many prestige levels your character is going to have in a new system is they're going to be automatically awarding an appropriate number of prestige levels based on how many perk tiers you've unlocked so even if you kept a character at level 50 with no prestiges you could be p3 in this new system and if you had reached prestige 3 before the update you're going to receive a special icon to display with your new prestige number in the end game chat so this is kind of like the legacy of the old prestige system so if you have any last minute characters you want to get to p3 now is the time to do so to get that rare icon dvd has implemented these matchmaking incentives to balance out the survivor killer queue times to get to a four to one ratio if a side needs more players to balance out the four to one ratio they're gonna give bonus blood points from ranges to 25 percent up to 100 percent bonus blood points depending on the demand and these incentives are unique to each account so what you and i could see for matchmaking incentives could be completely different based on your MMR, where you live, and stuff like that. And a little heads up, if crossplay is turned off, you actually won't be able to have these incentives. So make sure you turn crossplay on to get the bonus blood points. Now moving on to the big changes with the gameplay updates. The first big thing they did is increase the time it takes to complete a generator by 10 seconds from 80 seconds now up to 90 seconds. And they also made kicking a generator way better for the killer. And now it takes 2.5% of the max maximum progress away from a generator which is actually a lot so this is a pretty killer side of change and it's probably going to extend the duration of the trials by a good amount because now five generators take 50 seconds longer to complete in the grand scheme of things they've also made some pretty big general killer buffs they reduced the time it takes to break walls and pallets by 10 percent kicking generators is also 10 percent faster they've also reduced the cooldown for successful basic attacks by 10 percent and they've reduced the survivor's speed boost when they get injured by 10%. So basically, killers just got 10% better. <laughs> and they've also tweaked Bloodlust to make it a little bit more consistent, and getting to Bloodlust Tier 3 happens sooner in a chase. From the Bloodlust tiers changing from 15, 30 to 45 seconds to now 15, 25 to 35 seconds. So you get Tier 3 Bloodlust 10 seconds sooner. DBD's finally addressed camping and tunneling by making Borrow Time base kit, but it's even better than we had thought. When a survivor gets unhooked, automatically 
definitely they're gonna have five seconds of endurance on them and they're also gonna get seven percent haste for five seconds so that really encourages the killers to go after the unhooker rather than the person who just got unhooked because it's gonna be really hard to get them conspicuous actions are gonna cancel the haste and the endurance effect so it's kind of like ds now moving on to the big perk changes they reworked 39 perks starting with the meta perks dbd has given us graphs that show the pick rates of the most popular killer and survivor perks at different mmrs you can pause the video if you want to see this graph in detail but this is the survivor graph and this is the killer graph you can see that at the highest mmrs there's very few killer and survivor perks that get picked they're always the same ones and dbd wanted to address this going through the killer meta perk reworks the first one bbq they've removed the blood point bonus you got from it which really sucks and then they didn't change anything else so bbq got a nerf with ruin they halved the regression speeds from 200 at tier 3 to now 100 and after a survivor is killed ruin is automatically disabled so ruin definitely got a big nerf when you kick a gen with pop it now instantly regresses the generator by 20 percent of its current progress instead of 25 percent of its total progress so pop got a nerf corrupt still blocks the three furthest gens but once a survivor goes into the dying state the generators automatically get unblocked so corrupt got a nerf tinkerer's effects now only activate once per generator which means you can only get in a max of five times per trial so tinker definitely got a nerf noed still has the same effects but once it activates survivors see that noed totem's aura within four meters and that range increases to 24 meters over the course of 30 seconds so it's gonna be super easy to find the totem so noed definitely got a nerf pain resonance has the same effects but instead of exploding the generator it sparks the generator when it regresses meaning that survivors working on it won't reveal their location anymore so pain resonance got a nerf here the survivor meta perk changes dead hard completely got reworked instead of getting invincibility while you dash forward now when you activate dead hard it just gives you the endurance status effect for one second and if the killer hits you it's as if they hit you with borrowed time and you just zoom away with the injury so you don't get any distance from dead hard anymore it's kind of just immortality for one second so this is an interesting rework i would say it's nerf but i'm not a hundred percent sure yet this could also be a buff depending on how you use it when you get a ds stun instead of stunning the killer for five seconds it now stuns them for three seconds and ds deactivates automatically when the exit gates are powered meaning in end game you won't be able to use ds so ds got a nerf since borrowed time is now base kit the actual borrowed time perk now is just a longer borrowed time with the unhooked survivors getting six eight or ten seconds of endurance which means in total at tier three they're gonna get 15 seconds of endurance with borrowed time and regardless of tier it's also gonna increase the bonus haste that you get at base kit by 10 seconds so this is a buff to borrow time at tier three you're no longer going to be silent with iron will it's going to be 75 percent at tier three and when you're exhausted iron will won't lower your grunts of pain which is definitely a nerf self-care is going to heal slower healing 35 percent of the regular heal speed at tier three and they're removing the item efficiency bonus of healing entirely so self-care got a nerf spine chill now only activates when the killer has a clear line of sight on you so if they're looking in a direction behind a wall the spine chill won't activate and they're adding a half a second lingering effect to spine chill so that it won't constantly flicker for the action speed bonus or always be consistent but one of the action speed bonuses they're removing is the most important one which is vaulting so spine chill definitely got a nerf rip to the 15 percent vaulting speed builds moving on to the non-meta perk changes starting with the non-meta killer perk buffs overcharge is the same but they've also added the effect that a kicked generator's regression speed increases from 100% to 400% over the course of 30 seconds. Eruption's generator regression penalty was increased from 6% to 10%, and the duration of the incapacitated effect was increased from 12, 14, 16 seconds to 15 20 25 seconds so a nine second increase at tier three knockout is the same effects but they've also added that survivors recover 25 percent slower colorophobia is the same but they've also added that skill checks appear 50 percent more often inside the killer's tear radius when you're healing dark devotion instead of activating on a basic attack will now activate whenever the obsession loses a health state so that could be through an m1 or an m2 joel has the same effects but now no longer has a cooldown lethal pursuer is the same effects but it also extends the duration of all aura reading effects by two seconds which is a really big buff actually scorch hook gift of pain's action speed penalties 
were increased from 7, 8, 9% to 10, 13, and 16% for a 7% increase at tier 3. Finance action speed penalties were increased from 4, 4.5, and 5% on each survivor for a max of 16, 18, and 20% to now 4.5, 5, and 5.5% for each survivor for a maximum of 18, 20, and 22%. So at tier 3, that's a buff of 2%. Monster Shrine has gotten completely reworked into a score chook. It converts all of the basement hooks into score chooks, and score chooks now grant 10, 15, and 20% faster entity progression, meaning that survivors die 20% faster on those hooks at tier 3. But it's only if the killer is 24 meters away from the hook. This is overall a pretty big buff to one of the worst perks in the game, and we're going to see some crazy score chook builds with Monster Shrine and Pain Resonance maybe in the future. So I'm excited to see this perk in action. Moving on to the non-meta survivor perk buffs. Common Spear has the same effects, but he now also open chests and cleanse slash bless totems silently, but at a 40, 45 to 30 percent decreased speed. Saboteur is the same effects, but it can now also read the aura of scorch hooks. So this is a pretty big buff to counter scorch hooks in what I think will be a really big scorch hook meta. Body knowledge increases healing speed efficiency from 11, 22, and 33 percent now up to 30, 40, to 50 percent, which is a 17 percent increase at tier three. Off the record is going to be so crazy good. It's honestly, in my opinion, a top five survivor perk in the new meta. It's like a borrowed time decisive strike where after you get unhooked, you have the endurance status effect for 60, 70, and 80 seconds. So you'll be running around the trial for 80 seconds with an extra life, which is really crazy. And it's going to be like DS where if you do any conspicuous action, it'll deactivate its effects. It's going to be pretty crazy good and no killer is going to want to tunnel you. So I'm really interested to see what builds this is going to play into. Lucky Break's effects are the same, but it also got a cool buff where for every second you spend healing another survivor, a second is gained back into Lucky Break. Pharmacy is going to be green medkit galore. It'll now activate every time you're injured. And once it does, you open the chest and you'll get a green medkit. So if you open up all the chests, they could all be green medkits with pharmacy. Soul Survivor's effects are the same, but it also got effects from Bill's old left behind perk, where it increases your generator repair speed by 75% and your exit gate opening speed by 50% when you're the last survivor in the trial. Distortion's effects are the same, but you can now regain tokens, where you can gain one token for every 30 seconds spent in the killer's terror radius. With Lightweight, your scratch marks will fade faster from 1, 2, 3 seconds to 3, 4, 5 seconds. And your scratch marks themselves are also going to be more sporadic, so it's going to be harder for the killer to track you. Deja Vu is going to be a sleeper, really good perk now, and it'll really counter killers trying to set up three gens. Because now, on top of Deja Vu's current effects, the three highlighted generators will also have a 5% repair speed bonus. No One Left Behind now activates when all the generators are completed rather than when the exit gates are opened. And on top of the same effects, Unhooked Survivors will also gain a 7% movement speed bonus. Dark Sands got completely reworked. Whenever a generator is completed, Dark Sense activates, and the next time the killer comes within 24 meters of you, their aura is revealed for 5, 7, and 10 seconds, and then Dark Sense deactivates until another gen is completed. Tenacity has the same effects, but now your runs of pain are also going to be 75% quieter. Hope now has no cooldowns, so it's active for the entirety of the end game instead of only being active for 120 seconds. Overzealous's repair speed increase got up from 4, 5, 6% to now 6, 7, 8%. And this speed is now doubled if you cleanse a hex totem. So if you cleanse a hex totem, you could get up to 16% repair speed bonus at tier 3. We're gonna live forever's blood point bonuses were removed. But to compensate for this, whatever actions gave you a token towards those bonus blood points now give you tokens towards the secondary effect, which are that if you heal a survivor from the dying state, they get the endurance status effect for 6, 8, 10 seconds. So it's kind of like giving a survivor soul guard. So yeah, guys, that was the mid chapter update. This was a really, really big update and the meta for DBD is going to drastically change. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you're new. This has been Sharpshot and I will see you guys in the next video.